So hello everyone and welcome you all to this amazing amazing platform of PW English and this is your math educator Shivangi Rajput and I hope that each and every one of you is doing perfectly fine right so over here in a back to basic series we are again coming with one more chapter that is polynomials so polynomials is something which is a chapter that was in your 9th as well and now will be in your 10th as well so for starting with our class 10 polynomials we need to revise each and every concept from our class 9 so that polynomials of class 10 will become easy right so let's start with the very first thing that what are the topics to be covered so first of all we are going to learn about polynomial in one variable types of polynomials constant polynomial and your zero polynomial and other things which was there in your class 9 right so let's start with it that what is basically the definition of polynomial so polynomial is nothing but just an algebraic expression which is comprised of your variables your coefficients your constants your operators and the variable raised to a certain power known as the exponential power right so all these things collectively form what an expression that is a polynomial now if you see this expression you can see certain variables that is x and y right now what were variables whose values keeps on changing question by question for example the value of x in this expression might be 2 but for any other expression the value of x can be 3 4 whatsoever depends on the question right and y is also the variable the variable is raised to a certain degree certain power and that is known as the exponential power right the next at the number which is attached to your variable is known as the coefficient for example over here the coefficient of x square is 5 and over here the coefficient of y is 2 the number which is without any variable is known as what your constant term and these operators in between that is your positive and the negative sign are known as the operators so all these things collectively form what a polynomial but one thing which is important is what that a polynomial should a polynomial should not be raised to a non negative integral power now this means what that the degree that the power right when we talk about the power of the polynomial that power should always be a number which is a whole number no other number will be acceptable now let's go forward and look about for the algebraic expression now we see a lot of expressions in our day to day life for those expression to be called as a polynomial what all do we have to see what all do we have to check let's quickly go through it the very first statement is the exponents of the variable should always be a whole number let me give you an example that is for example if we have x to the power minus 2 plus 2x plus 3 over here we can see that the variable is raised to a power that is a negative number which is not a whole number so if our variable is raised to a power that is not a whole number over here in this case it's a negative number so such expressions are not called polynomial right so for an expression to be called as a polynomial the variable should always be the variable should always be raised to a power which is a whole number the second thing which we have is there should be no fractional power right there should be no fractional power means that the power of the variable should not be a fractional number for example x to the power 1 by 2 minus 3 is not a polynomial for example root x minus 7x square plus 3 is not a polynomial because over here it's root x and root x also means x to the power 1 by 2 all right the next thing that we have is there should be no variable in the denominator that when we are talking about the denominators there should be no variable in it for example if we have x square plus 1 by x minus 2 so over here what we can see is that x is present in the denominator so there should be no denominator in your there should be no variable in your denominator so what are the three things let's quickly take and recap first of all that the power 
of the variable and we are only talking about variable these three points are only applicable to the variable part so the very first thing is that the power of the variable should always be a whole number the second thing is that basically there should be no fractional power of the variable and the third easy piece of thing is that there should be no variables in the denominator so if these three things are not present in any expression so that that expression can be called off as a polynomial let's see some example for example over here so we have to tell the degree as well let's quickly see what is degree of a polynomial right let us talk about the degree of a polynomial so degree is nothing but the highest power of the variable what the highest power of the variable the highest power of the variable is known as what is known as the degree of your polynomial for example we have x square plus x cube plus 3x square right so this is what this is something uh, for example 3x uh, let's take it as 4 right for example over here we can see that the power of variable over here is 2 the power of variable over here is 3 and the power of the variable with x at the last is 4 so among all these power the 4 is the maximum one so we will say that the degree of the polynomial is nothing but 4 right i hope this thing is clear with everyone yes all right let's move forward to the question it is saying which of the following expression forms a polynomial and if yes then what will be its degree as simple as that we have to see the question let's see the question over here we have to check three things right the variable is y the variable is y right if someone gets confused with this root 2 no this root 2 is the coefficient we have to do nothing with the coefficient we have to just look up for the variable the power of the variable is a whole number here it's two here is one yes it is a whole number the second thing is what the second thing is simply that there should be no fractional power yes over here it's two it's one no fractional power there should be no variable in the denominator yes no variable in the denominator so yes we can say that this is a polynomial and the highest power of the variable is two so the degree is two the next thing which we have is 2 root x plus 7. Now over here, root x means x to the power 1 by 2 plus 7. Right? As simple as that. Over here, there the power of the variable should be a whole number. 1 by 2 is not a whole number. That is a fractional number it is. And fractional number, if it is included in that particular expression, so that expression is not worthy enough to call the polynomial so we will say no this expression is not a polynomial now let's move forward now polynomial and one variable which means what that in that entire expression there should be one variable that is used for example 5x square plus 2y minus 7 is not a polynomial in one variable what we can write is 5x square plus 2y minus 7 equals to 0. Now, this is a polynomial in one variable, right? Okay. Now, depending on the degree, what I say, depending on the degree, and what is the degree, the highest power of your polynomial, depending on the degree of the polynomial, we can call the polynomial as simply your linear, quadratic, cubic, or biquadratic. For example, linear means what? The degree of that polynomial is 1, right? For example, we can say x plus 2. Over here, the power is nothing but 1. If the degree is 1, so yes, linear. Over here, what? The degree for quadratic. Quadratic means what? Degree 2, right? Degree 2, for example, x squared plus 3. Degree 2, the highest power is 2. For cubic, it means degree 3. Right, and degree 3 means x cube plus 2x square minus 1. Degree 3, the, the highest power of the variable is 3. Now, biquadratic means degree 4. And also, students, biquadratic is also known as quartic polynomial. There are two names for degree 4 that is biquadratic and quadratic. Uh, and quartic. x to the power 4 
plus x square minus 2. Simple, right? The highest degree, the highest power is 4. So it is by quadratic or quartic. Now, depending on the question, over here it is asking, classify the following polynomial as constant, linear, quadratic, cubic and your quartic polynomial. Since the highest degree over here is 3, so this will simply be your cubic polynomial. The next thing that we have is, over here, it's root 2x. Now, the root 2 is the coefficient. We have to do nothing with the coefficient. Over here, the degree, the power of the variable is 1. So, it will be a linear polynomial, as simple as that. Now, depending on the basis of terms, we can classify them as monomial, binomial, trinomial. Monomial means one term. For example, x square, one term. Binomial means two terms. 3x cube plus 1. So, one term and the second term. Trinomial means a polynomial with three different terms. For example, 4x cube minus 3x square plus 2x. So, this is one single term. This is the second term. And this will be simply your third term. All right. Now, let's move forward. Give an example of a trinomial of degree 4. Trinomial means three terms. Degree 4 means the highest power of the variable should be 4. So we can say x to the power 4 plus 3x square minus 2. So it is a degree 4 as the highest power of the variable is 4. And it is a trinomial as the number of terms that we have in this particular expression is 3. The next is now. Based on the number of variables, since we are studying only in one single variable, so one single variable is known as univariate. One variable. If we have two different variables in the polynomial, that is known as a bivariate. And if we have three different polynomials, we call it as a trivariate. But we will only focus on our univariate. All right. Now, let's talk about constant polynomial. Now, what is a constant polynomial? Since I have told you that basically all the variables, coefficients, constants, all these things comprise of polynomial. But what if? What if we just have a single number that is, for example, 2? If we have just this single number that is 2, will this single number as 2 will be called as something? Will it be known as a polynomial? Yes. How? See, we can write 2 as 2 into 1. Yes, for sure. We can write this one as x to the power 0. And why? Remember your exponents and power that any number raised to the power 0 is 1. Any number raised to the power 0 is 1. Any number raised to the power 0 is 1. Any number raised to the power 0 is 1. So upon this place of 1, we just have written x to the power 0. That is 1. Now, this is 2x to the power 0. Now, we have a variable now. Yes, the power of the variable should be a whole number. And yes, 0 is our whole number. Right? No negative power, no negative power, no fractional power, no variable in the denominator. So this 2 alone will form a polynomial and not only this 2 any number let it be 2 let it be 1 by 2 let it be minus 17 by 6 let it be root 2 let it be minus root 3 any 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 individual number which is there will be known as a polynomial and such polynomials are known as constant polynomials so a polynomial containing only one term and that also a non zero constant this means what? Apart from 0, if we have any number, that will be known as a constant polynomial. And the degree. See, what is the degree? The power of your variable. And over here, the power of the variable is 0. So what we can say? The degree of a constant polynomial is always 0. That the degree of any constant polynomial is 0. Right. Let's move forward to the zero polynomial. Now, what is zero polynomial? So, we have learned that constant polynomials are all the numbers, but not zero. Now, zero polynomials is only the number zero. Right. So, constant polynomial, all the numbers apart from zero. Zero polynomial, only the number zero. Next is what? Constant polynomial has a degree of zero. <coughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And basically, the degree of the zero polynomial is not defined. 
the degree of your zero polynomial is not defined constant polynomial degree zero zero polynomial the degree is not defined now after that we have what zeros of polynomial after that we have what zeros of polynomial now what are zeros of polynomial for example 3x square plus 2x minus 1 right so basically the value of variable what are the zeros the value of variable in this particular thing the value of variable in this particular let me uh, take it as minus all right okay so basically what are zeros of polynomial the value of x for this expression so that this expression turns out to be zero for example if i put my x equivalent to one this will give me 3 into 1 square minus 2 into 1 minus 1 3 minus 2 minus 1 3 minus 3 equivalent to 0 so over here I can say that x equivalent to 1 is the 0 of this polynomial that means what if in this expression I put my x equivalent to 1 I will be getting 0 as the answer right this is zero of a polynomial the next thing which you will be studying about is the remainder theorem is about the remainder theorem now what is remainder theorem so with even childhood we have learned division right and we know that dividend is equals to divisor into question plus remainder so this is simply the remainder theorem that we are going to choose but over here this is the division part that we will be dividing polynomials with polynomials but if we have to talk about the remainder theorem that means what putting that value of x and checking out that that particular polynomial leaves what answer for whatever answer it leaves after keeping that any number that will be the remainder of your polynomial all right and the next thing which you are going to learn which we uh, you have already learned is factorization now what you learned in factorization is basically any polynomial that is of the form ax square plus bx plus c can be splitted into two factors for example x plus a and x plus b so these are known as what minus a and this will be equals to minus b so by factorization we have learned to calculate two different zeros of the polynomial right and these two different zeros can be calculated so this zero is known as alpha this zero is known as your beta so now in class 10th you will be learning the relationship between these zeros and the coefficient of your polynomial this thing which you will be learning in class 10th right and the last thing which we learned in class ninth polynomials were the algebraic identities that was simple a plus b whole square that is equals to a square plus b square plus 2ab we learned about a minus b whole square that is a square plus b square minus 2ab then we learned about a square minus b square which is equals to a plus b and a minus b right and then we learned about simply x plus a and x plus b which is equivalent to x square plus a plus b into x plus a b now apart from all these things these were the basics right so apart from all these things you guys are going to learn about a lot of different things that is the relationship between the zeros and the polynomials how to simply factorize a polynomial and how can we take out the zeros by your you know lengthy divisions and your long divisions as well so stay tuned right and uh, i hope that the polynomials will seem as easy as it was in ninth class so all the very best and i hope that all the basics are clear with everyone thank you so much